Today on Maker's Muse, we're looking at the TiVo Tarantula, produced by TiVo in China. The king of kits with a huge international following. So, this is going to be a two-part video series because I feel that this machine needs far more detail gone into it than I could do in just one video. So this video is going to be all about my assembly experience, and then in the second part, we're going to go into how this machine prints as a 3D printer. Let's get into it. Ah, oh, welcome back guys. So as I said, this is the TiVo Tarantula produced by TiVo in China and it's a 3D printing kit. It comes in a box like that with all the bits you need to make your printer. Almost. In terms of the machine configuration itself, there's actually a few options you can go for. There is the baseline TiVo Tarantula which has a 200 by 200 by 200 millimeter build volume or you can upgrade to a slightly extended build volume with an extended 280 millimeters on the Y. There's also the option to upgrade from a single to a dual extruder system with a Bowden fed motor from the side. And also you can have a touch probe to make the leveling automatic. TiVo sent me the full featured kit. So I've got a dual extruder setup, although only one motor currently mounted and I haven't mounted the touch probe yet because I'm old school and I like leveling my bed by hand. Because of these various options, the price of the TiVo Tarantula can actually vary quite wildly. It goes from about $220 for the base kit all the way up to about $420 if you get a fully featured kit. So it's not the cheapest 3D printing kit you can buy, but it's certainly not the most expensive. The machine itself is constructed from aluminium extrusions with rollers which roll along them for all the axes and laser cut acrylic which holds all the parts together. There's also various little metal components which all have little separated baggies. The laser cut acrylic for the most part does work pretty well. It's structurally strong enough for most of the aspects of it, but there is some areas like the bed and this motor mount here, I'll talk about in a little bit, where it's just a little bit weak. And you do need to be very careful when assembling this machine because acrylic is brittle. If you over tighten those screws or you hit something back and or drop it, you're gonna snap it. It will snap straight away and that'll be the end of it. I have actually had to print one small component at the back here for the lead screw nut because the original component was uh, just, in my opinion, way too brittle and I just decided, nut, nah, I'm gonna print something. Uh, so that's one thing I've already printed for it, but the rest is stock out of the box. In terms of documentation in the box, this is where some of you are gonna get a shock. So it comes with an inventory list, which is kind of useful, but doesn't document the extended parts. And then it comes with a set of instructions which is no more than two pages, basically. So I approached this machine as if I was a brand new 3D printing uh, builder. I'd never built a machine before and decided to do it in my bedroom, in my granny flat. And initially it was quite enjoyable. If you've made Meccano or Lego, Technic, whatever like that before, you'll enjoy stepping through those steps to make this machine into a kind of looking like a 3D printer. And then those instructions stop basically at step seven. In terms of assembling a 3D printer from kind of looking like a machine to a fully function 3D printer, there's just a picture and a wiring diagram, which in my opinion makes the TiVo Tarantula really just a box with parts that can be turned into a 3D printer if you know what you're doing. But then that takes us into the 3D printing community on Facebook for the TiVo Tarantula, which currently has just under 5,000 members. And I could not have made this machine without the efforts of those people. So in terms of getting it from the, what the instructions led me to, to the final product, I followed this fantastic YouTube uh, series, which I'm gonna link in the description. But to be completely fair again, this is the community making instructions for a machine that should have had instructions in the first place. And he does make some mistakes. He backtracks sometimes. And because I'm following along, I make the same mistakes. So that was a little bit frustrating. Also, in terms of the actual very few steps that TiVo does provide, turns out that some of those are wrong. And there's some parts that do actually need to be interchanged. Like there is small metal L brackets, and then there's some larger aluminium gusseted brackets. And in terms of where you use those, it's kind of up to you. So in terms of this machine, this TiVo Tarantula is very much mine. When it comes to the wire design, the wire routing, where I put things, I kind of just stopped watching the videos and stopped trying to, trying to find things online and just made it how I wanted to make it. 
which leaves me wanting a few things, but overall, it seems to have come together pretty well. So let's go over some of the features I do like that's included in the TiVo kit. The heat bed. The heat bed is fantastic. It does heat up very well, and it's very large, especially in the extended version. The LCD has a very nice click wheel, which I do enjoy using, and it's very satisfying, and the clicks are actually consistent with what you're navigating through the menu. It does have full-size NEMA 17 motors, and the Bowden design is actually quite nice. It's full metal, and it does grip the filament really well. The rollers are a cheap approach, and I will say they do work, but they're not rolling on the proper aluminium extrusion. There's only a very small amount of contact for those rollers. So in terms of dialing them in, you've got four rollers and you need to tighten and change an eccentric nut to get them in the right place. For example, on the, 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 the X here, all rollers except this one are currently spinning, which I need to adjust again, because if you adjust them too tight, they bind up. <laughs> so I can turn it by hand, but then, see now it's, now it's kind of turning. See how that's very subtle. So in terms of the rollers, if you make them too tight, they will bind up. So these are all very tight and the motors seem to be okay, but it, too loose, obviously you'll get lots of wobble and slob. So this machine is actually quite rigid now. There's a few mods I could do to make it even more rigid, but overall it's a very light design and it does work quite well in the uh, way I've assembled it. If you are careful with your wire management and you do something like this where you get zip ties and route it down like this, you'll, you'll be able to make it manage pretty well because over time wires will fatigue, which is always something to watch out for. So if you make sure you avoid any pinch points, you'll make sure that it works for quite a long time. So let's now move on to the things I don't like about the TiVo Tarantula. Firstly, there's a few design choices that don't make any sense to me. So the first one's just a little bit weird. They've put the homing switch for the x-axis on the carriage, not on the frame, so it's got an additional amount of movement has to do and the wire has to run through the, the cable. It still works, but it just seems to be like, why would you go that approach? One thing I really don't like is the design for the Z. So this is a lead screw with a uh, flex coupler, but the flex coupler is pointing downwards and all the weight's on the gantry. So because of that, it's like a spring. So you push it down, you can see the flex coupler flexing, right? Also, it's mounted on this six millimeter acrylic. Most of this frame is laser cut from six millimeter acrylic, and for the most part, it is rigid enough, but in these circumstances, you can see the whole thing flexing. That's gonna mean your Z axis resolution is gonna be very poor. It's gonna be bouncing around, and yeah, I can't see a solution to that without using a rigid coupler. Really, that motor should have been at the bottom with a rigid coupler or something like that like all the other i3 designs I've seen. At the top just makes no sense to me. Now this next bit is extremely important. If you're a parent or a school looking to buy 3D printing kits for your kids, the TiVo Tarantula or any other Chinese 3D printing kit currently on the market possibly, you need to watch this. When you come to wire the TiVo Tarantula, the instructions require you to wire mains voltages. So in Australia that'd be 240 volts or overseas it might be 110. Either way, that voltage can kill you. Voltage from the wall is not meant to be touched by anyone except an electrician and by providing a bare power supply and a bare plug with stripped wires, that's just completely wrong to me. So if you want to get this kit and it's for a kid or something like that and you want to make sure they're safe, open the box before they get it, get rid of this power supply. It's still a great power supply, it does work, it gets a little bit hot but you can't wire mains if you're like 10 years old. It's just irresponsible. So get rid of that and get them maybe one of these, a, a DC barrel jack, like all the other printers that I use, use. So an external DC power brick into uh, a female uh, jack that matches. This is a 12 volt system, so just get a powerful 12 volt brick that matches this power supply because this community does not need someone to die from touching mains voltages. I'm gonna get off my high horse now. I've worked in the electronics industry for ages. I have been shocked by 240 volts before. It does hurt a lot. Luckily, I wasn't injured, but people do die every year from mains voltage accidents. Moving on, how long can you expect to spend putting together a 3D printing kit? Well, I've actually written an ebook in terms of comparing kits to fully assembled 3D printers. This kit actually took me ages to put together. Not because it was so much difficult, just because personally, I do not have much spare time. So if you run 
If you work at a full-time business, you only have some weekends, but then you gotta spend the weekends with family or want to spend the weekends with family, you will struggle to find time to put together a kit. But if you come home and you wanna just chill and relax, and you've, you used to assemble Meccano, or you've put together remote control cars before, or you've done soldering kits, and you find that relaxing, you will enjoy putting this together, 100%. Because this will be, when you finish it, a labor of love. I look at this printer now, and I look at all the things I've done, like I put that zip tie, zip tie, zip tie, I did this and that, I put all the bolts on, I did that. So I look at this machine, and I feel a huge sense of accomplishment. But at the same time, I have invested a lot of time into this, and it's still barely printing. I need to fine tune various things, I need to fine tune my slicer, uh, I need to get a fan onto it, that's another thing. The TiVo doesn't have a cooling fan for the PLA out of the box, you need to print it aftermarket. And of course you need a, uh, a mount for your spools, I'm currently using this. But it does print, and in terms of the bang for buck, if you're willing to put it together, there's not really anything else comparable to it. And this is the thing about building your own 3D printer, and a lot of you guys will agree, the assembly of it is maybe 5% of the overall journey, the 95% is the tweaking of it. So as I said, this machine now does print. I've got some maker coins here that are printed onto glass. And they work, but they're pretty bad because I don't have an external cooling fan. I haven't tweaked my retract yet to suit the Bowden design. That's the next step. And once I get that working, it's gonna be the calibration because this bed you know, has a bit of flex in it. This gantry has a bit of flex in it. Everything can shift and tweak. I don't know how square this machine is yet. That's the next stage. So that's why I decided to do this video in two parts. This assembly process I wanted to cover in this video, which I hopefully have done in enough detail for you guys to make an informed decision. And the next video, I'm gonna show you how it prints. Because at this stage, in my opinion, it's a completed printer. It might need a bit of work, but it actually works. And now I just need to tweak it and see what it's capable of. So thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you found this video of the TiVo Tarantula informative and useful. I have to say a huge thanks to the guys at TiVo. Uh, they've been amazing in terms of uh, providing an entire printing kit for a prize for my 25,000 subscriber giveaway. And I, guys, I hope you take this on as constructive feedback because I do really like your kit. There's just a few things you do need to change. If you enjoy this video guys on Makers Muse and want to see more future 3D printing reviews, hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. I love making this sort of content for you guys. And of course, as I mentioned, a 3D printing kit versus a ready to run printer. I do have an entire ebook which weighs against various 3D printing components and factors to help you make an informed decision. And that link is also in the description and buying that helps me out a lot to make content for you guys. Anyway guys, I'll see you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Catch you later. Bye. Here's the latter half of the 20th century. A man has sent rockets into deep space. He has placed satellites into orbit. He has actually walked in space.